they go, this process of exposure is very important because we have been betrayed over and over by our city council. They have been asked for the past 20 years to repeal that camping ordinance. We have spent untold number of hours and weeks in the city council chambers saying repeal the ordinance. It has caused untold suffering and hardship for homeless people who have also lost their property as a result. Uh, we came down against the, against, the against the city of Boise. Can I use the chair? The city of Boise was prosecuting yeah. people under the no. anti-camping ordinances. And there, they said they would refrain from enforcing it unless there was shown to be no shelter for people. In other words, they promised not to enforce it when the shelters were full. Sacramento enforced it all the time. Sacramento enforced it in 2016 against Suzanne here, who slept outside the city hall to protest that camping ordinance. The city brought a SWAT team out at two in the morning to dislodge people who had been out in front of city, call, city halls in historically terrible rains and storms. So we have to redouble our efforts. The camping ordinance is unconstitutional, as this court has held. It has held that it is cruel and unusual punishment to criminalize people for living outside when they have no alternative. This is a new day that is coming. It's a new year. The number of groups in Sacramento that are galvanizing and mobilizing against the conditions that homeless people endure is growing. And this Boise case is a powerful weapon that we should drive home to the city council. This is their second unconstitutional ordinance that is designed to protect particularly this rapidly developing downtown with its luxury apartments. They want to make this into a tech city. They want to dislodge the poor people. They want to push them out to other states, other towns, other areas. And we have to unify and repeal that ordinance and expose the kind of contributions they're getting and the kind of alliances they've made for business and for profit. So I'm here on behalf of the Sacramento Homeless Organizing Committee, that shop, and all these folks here. Yeah. We meet every week on Wednesday at 10 o'clock over at the library, near the library at Loaves and Fishes. So we have an open door. Come and find out what's happening. All right, then Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne Hastings. <laughs> I just want to um, say that I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm not happy about the uh, circumstances, but I am happy to be able to give my voice to what's going on in this city. It's very unfair how people are being pushed out simply because they're poor. Right? I myself am on a fixed income. I'm on. I'm disabled and I'm on SSI. I could not afford an apartment downtown. I can barely afford where I live right now. If I didn't have people, relatives helping me, I'd be on the street right now. And I give all my money pretty much to a landlord. And it's unfair because we have the right to survive. We have the right to our life. We do not have the right to have to struggle. This is not a third world country. This is the richest country in the world. And we have people dying in the streets. We have people going without, we have people getting their children taken because they cannot afford utilities, because they cannot afford their rent. Could any punishment be cooler than that? You're punishing people for being poor. 
Bible said, despise not the poor, they will always be with you. But, we're, but this city is despising people for being poor. They're despising people for being homeless. It's wrong. These people did probably did not choose to be homeless. They didn't just wake up in the morning and say, well, I'm going to walk out of my apartment and be homeless and, and live on the streets. Nobody really chose that. And it's, it's traumatic because I have been out on the streets. And it's horrible. It, it's frightening. You can't sleep because every time somebody comes near your tent or near you while you're asleep, you wonder, is this somebody that is going to harm you? Are you going to make it to the night? What if this happens? You know, it's horrible. And from the time that I did take part in the occupation here at City Hall and had the SWAT team come and get us all up, uh, detain us, treat us like criminals, just because we were trying to fight for, our fight for the rights of our fellow man. And because we're trying to, some of us are trying to make this a better city. We're trying to make it a compassionate city. And we're tired of being gaslighted by City Hall right. yeah. and lied to by yeah. City Hall. Right. And I hope they hear me yeah. and know that we are not going to buy their bullshit. Right. Yeah. Yes. All right. Oh, then, then Nikki over here. Nikki over here. <laughs> If you want, I can elaborate on the uh, Yeah, would you like stuff. to share a few words? Here. And if you guys want, I can elaborate on what happened during the occupation war. I just want to say, uh, be quickly, uh, I just barely got here. And, uh, I've been struggling since I was nine years old. And uh, I watched my dad shoot my mom back in the head with a 30 ounce rifle. Right in front of me, from here to where that guy's sitting. Watch our brains all over the wall. And I'm, 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 I'm Marines. You know what I'm saying? We're X now. And we're E3. But anyway, uh, every time I lay somewhere, I've been with the housing for 35 years. But every time I lay somewhere,